Where the fuck is McClay? What? what? <coughs> episode 37, Derek Davenport. Hey. <laughs> and if you don't mind doing it to that count, no, it's kind absolutely. of a thing, a thing we do here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm episode 37? Okay. Uh, we have the numbers right, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. The Bogcast, episode... What? So I can see it. Yeah, still learning <laughs> too, yeah? The Bogcast, episode 37, with me, Derek Davenport. Awesome. You can, yeah, you said it there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> And action. Awesome. This is the podcast episode 37. We are officially sponsored by Bang Salon. Come get all your hair needs, including cuts, natural colors, vivid colors, extensions, shampoo and styling, all under one roof at Bang Salon. Find and message Bang Salon at Bang Salon on Instagram at B-A-N-G-D-S-A-L-O-N. Use promo code BOGCAST for 20% off your first visit. <laughs> Sorry. So come on down and get banged by Jordan. But if you really try to bang her, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> cool. Also, uh, we're brought to you today by uh, My RSO. Um, if you don't know what My RSO is, you need to go check it out. Check it out <laughs> at info at trymyrso.com. Cool. Stuff saved, saving lives. Right on. Yeah. Nice. Do you take that every day or what? Every day. Sweet. Every night, right before bed. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Awesome. Well, we have a awesome guest in the house today. Um, we're actually t- talking about a crazy story, how we kind of are in the same <laughs> world more than we even knew. So. Seriously. <laughs> What's Life up, man? Life is crazy, man. Uh, right. Derek, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic, man. <laughs> I, I wish we could have recorded that. That would have been great. Hey, well, we know what happened. Yeah. We can tell the story. Yeah, like definitely. You said, you so said the GoPro I didn't hear it, so, it, so I yeah. didn't hear yeah, it, so, so it's going to be I'll fresh just, for I'll me. I'll just tell it to you. So um, I, we were just bullshitting, and then um, I was telling him how I know Don Rizzi, and I was like, yeah, I used to travel on a four-man Halo team with him and this and that, and um, then I was like, you know, I wanted to get so good at Halo that to, pra- to practice, I bought a second Xbox just to play on my sister. And then she got really good, and she started traveling on the team and was one of the first female gamers. And then he goes, do you know Brenda Obit? And I'm all, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's my idiot said. brain not even putting the last <laughs> names together until it came out like, of my mouth. My sister, dude, and yeah. I was like, oh, man, small world. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, we actually uh, went to the same elementary school and yeah, ended up Green finding Bar, out we lived a couple house. blocks away from each wow. other growing up, so that's pretty wild. You know what that is, right? Oh, God. What is that? <laughs> Synchronicity. Yes. Yeah, he talked about that a lot hey. on here. Hey, that's yeah, synchronicity, yeah. man. It's crazy. Dude. Shit's meant to happen in this world. There's some energy out there that pushes things in a certain direction. So yeah. you probably went to Greenbrier when they actually had a, was a brick school, right? Uh, uh, no, actually, when I went, I portables. think it was all the portable. <laughs> yeah, still. me too. We yeah. talk about that because, a lot on because the show, they yeah. went to Bel Air. Oh, what's up? Oh, nice. Oh, you, you need it closer. closer. A little closer. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Sorry. A little, little. Yeah. 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 Just go. come Perfect. a little closer. Yeah. Here we go. Hey. Because I went to Bel Air to their school in kindergarten and first grade, and then they decided, oh, there's too many kids here, so they built a bunch of portables and called yeah. it Green Bar, and I was like the an OG <laughs> Green, Green Bar. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like an OG Green Bar. But then once I graduated, it turned into this amazing like brick school yeah. and all this. So. Yeah. Right shout on. out to Mr. Fay and uh, Mrs. Haynes. Those are the two <laughs> that definitely I remember from. Uh, from the that era of life and uh, do you yeah, remember awesome the, teachers? Um, sorry, uh, do you remember the uh, Greenbrier um, theme song? We wore remember? the Greenbrier <laughs> Sidewinder Pride for everyone to see. <laughs> yeah. I can do the whole thing. Yeah, I'm just yeah. so, I do know so, it. So <laughs> wait, hold on. The, so the, what were, what was your mascot? A sidewinder. Sidewinder. A sidewinder. Slithery snake. I didn't yeah, know that I the remember. whole fucking time. I did not <laughs> know that your guys was a sidewinder. Because no one gave a shit about Greenbrier, dude. Yeah. you guys, uh, you uh, asshole Bel Air kids. Fucking hey, we weren't we weren't part of Bel Air, dude. We just went to the school, man. Oh, I couldn't act on like you were all <laughs> left out and shit. You guys were like cougars, right? I got it's no beef with you. Bro. I didn't even know. So, um, you grew up on uh, Bluefield? Yeah, I grew up, uh, like I said, basically like 59th Avenue, Union Hills. Yeah, the neighborhood dude. over there on Bluefield, and um, 
I don't think I can remember my old address though. I wish I could. I, off the top I of my can. Head. So that's where, like, were you born in Arizona? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born and raised in Arizona. Lived here um, all my life except um, I think 94, 95. Lived in Littleton, Colorado for a little bit, which was right before the shootings. Yeah, actually, I got a picture of me playing Little League for Columbine, and we used to, um, you know, play our baseball games I at get, the high school. Oh, I knew a girl that, that died. Well, yeah. that's what I was going to talk about. That story is that me and Chris went to school with uh, two sisters, one my age, one his age. And uh, the one his age was uh, in Columbine, and she died. Oh, and I remember, I don't know if you were there. You might not have been there. Um, every day after school, we would go over to Blanzias. And we, you know, like, what, we got out at like 10 or something like that, and we would go over to Blanzias, and we'd hang out, you know, most of the day there. And uh, we were chilling. I think we were, like, playing, like, Nintendo, like, like, like GoldenEye or something, and we went to go change the game or something and the news was on and it's like breaking news columbine and we were watching that shit live our senior year of fucking high school watching that shit live as it was going down and we're like out just got out of school that shit was crazy yeah yeah, yeah that, that was shit trip, was crazy man. man and uh so yeah um aaron fleming and what was her sister's name katie kelly kelly fleming yeah, kelly that's fleming fucked up, yeah. man. kelly fleming yeah she passed there so that was yeah, a bummer rest in peace man yeah hell yeah but beyond, uh, you know, um, obviously what people, obviously what Littleton is known for yeah. and everything like that, I got to say it was definitely a, a really cool experience for me to live in a small town. I got that small town feel, and I thought it was such a trip to be able to go to an elementary school that didn't have fences around it. Yeah. It was crazy. Like nine years old. Wow. Like, no, you can go walk home. You live a couple blocks away. You can go walk home for lunch. And, oh, wow. you know, did the whole like, had like the little stand by me group, you know, with yeah. a little fort by the creek and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, used to ride the bikes to Chatfield Lake and all that type of stuff when it would freeze over. No, it was a good experience. And then we came back here and I've been here uh, ever since, you know, traveled around a little bit, but uh, this is definitely home. Yeah. Hell yeah and dude. I love it. Love AZ. Um, did you grow up with that skate park there on Union Hills when you No, you were actually, talking about? dude, when I first got into I mean, it was it was in Canto or nothing. And yeah. Thrasher yeah. Land. Yeah, Thrasher you know? Land. Yes, <laughs> yeah. bro. And, um, Thrasher <laughs> Land. Know, Holy shit. Yeah, definitely. Thanks Way to all the, all the parents back in the day giving us the rides, you know, every <laughs> yeah, day, yeah. every yeah. weekend. Could you imagine and having Thrasher a Land there, was though? out oh, there? Man. It, it would then, have been fucking great. I was so thankful when, um, you know, we moved, like I was telling you, we moved up moving out to Peoria and and then um, Thunderbird or Rio Vista, I call it Thunderbird, Thunderbee. But uh, then that that got built, and that's that's been my home park ever since. I still frequent that. Like, oh, really? I still skate. Oh yeah. wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I still try to go at least like once a week. Oh, you wow. know what I mean? And everything. That's I'm, fucking cool. I'm that's the really old man, cool, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, skateboarding is a uh, is uh, a huge part of my life. Oh, and, wow, I uh, didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, it was definitely uh, one of those things that taught me persistence because yeah you know some we all have other things that we're naturally gifted at and uh, admittedly <laughs> that was not but i loved it and i wanted to progress and mm -hmm. it was just uh keep going and falling and trying again and uh shout out to all the old skate crew and you yeah. still friends with a lot of those guys i uh, was still in contact yeah. obviously social media and yeah, stuff yeah. like that but uh you know they've traveled to other parts of the world and that's where they call home base mm -hmm. but uh Obviously, you know, with those cats and, you know, the relationships like that, it doesn't matter how much time yeah. or distance you're always yeah. right yeah, here for no sure, matter yeah. what. So, yeah. Yeah, we got it. We just got news uh, the other day that one of our, our best friends, like family, is moving back. And uh, Todd, you know, oh, yeah. Todd's moving back. So, That's cool. yeah. And uh, he's been gone for a while. And he was like one of those ki cats. And now we're all going to be like pretty close to each other for the first time in a cool. long fucking time <laughs> like 20 yeah. years yeah that's like crazy 15 years yeah. yeah that is crazy that's awesome did you was um this the time you started skating the same time you started getting into music and playing and, uh, uh, well, and stuff too or like growing up my my dad always played guitar you know acoustic guitar was his thing and my mom played piano when i was younger so um you know i kind of grew up in a they weren't necessarily musicians so to speak but always around music and everything like that so you know i got the hand-me-down guitars and everything like that and um no i actually got into music um late in high school uh, believe it or not like i would play with my dad and you know mess around on the guitar but uh the music that i pursued was hip-hop music and uh shout outs to Corey hill um he's the guy i did the music with and kind of got me into it and it was uh it all started you know just listening to music and hanging out and then one desert party around the keg a freestyle session and Nice. decided to go for it and it was like that was all right man like let's work and that's how it started and just started writing and i mean i was always into writing you know everything like that 
growing up, I always enjoyed writing poetry and, and things like that and everything. And, um, you know, those things went hand in hand and it was an awesome way to express and to meet new people. And, and, uh, now music is <clears throat> still a huge part of my life, even though I haven't really released anything in a while or performed, I still do it. And I still got my home recording studio at home. And I've been I was going to ask you if you're writing and, and yeah, recording. Yeah, was, that's cool. Uh, you know, you know how life goes in the creative process. It's a, a flourishing garden or sometimes it's, uh, you know, a wasteland. And, uh, I got to admit going through <clears throat> some personal stuff and just, you know, you learn, you grow. And, and, uh, that's actually how I got into acting. You know, the music went really well and we had moderate success and I had a blast doing it. And, um, uh, also shout outs to Mike Ross, Zach Voigt and Joe Hafey, who joined as the band collective, you know, by the end we were a live hip hop band. And, so, um, so it was a band more than it a started, it started as a duo okay. and that was like that for, you know, years in the beginning, just me and Corey doing our thing. And then, um, as we expanded and you meet new people and collaborate and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it ended up being a live band That's by the end, bad. which was awesome. And we all could play different instruments. So we would play and like rotate in between songs That's and stuff. Cool, and, yeah. uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. But you know, as people grow together and then grow apart and things change and, um, needing a new creative outlet of some kind because uh, it kind of came like a bottleneck. You know, you got all these emotions, all these thoughts and ideas you want to get out, but everything's trying to get out at once. And plus your, you know, distorted view of yourself and who wants to hear this? You yeah. Know, yeah. Cry know baby. Yeah, yes, yeah. you got to say. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, I can relate to that. Yeah, you had hard times. So did everyone else, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, we went to dinner theater. Uh, went to Murder in a Meal dinner theater for my sister's birthday. And uh, I had a blast there. And two of their guys at the end of the night when they did their, their bow and their curtain, um, it was their send-off night. And I totally did the cliche thing where I walked out and sat in the car. And, like, something said, like, just go back in and see if you can audition. You need something. You need something right now. You need something to kind of just get you out, meet new people and a way to be expressive and all that stuff. And I did. And that's fucking really history. cool. Yeah, and, that's uh, really cool. you know, if you believe in alternate universes and lifelines and stuff like that, you know, I, I feel for the Derek that didn't go back in cause I don't necessarily know where he is right now yeah. and stuff like that. Well, but, I mean, uh, look at all the things that you've done since then by just making yeah, that small was, decision. Man. That's awesome. Say, like man, you've been, I've been I'm, seeing you making a lot of moves recently. So thank just you. really quick, I can explain <clears> to these guys. Um, so he's the star of expo Shucks. which is yeah Joseph i saw it. <laughs> yeah no okay. no i, I didn't saw know that yeah. yeah yeah no i saw yeah, that so um yeah man you've been i mean Thank you're you. fucking that was an awesome decision that you Thank made you. and i think that should inspire other people who are having those decisions just to make that jump and who knows you know where you can end up because well, you know sometimes you know life you're on course you got this idea and storms can come in and, and while you're in it you're thinking this is taking me so far away of where i want to go and all this stuff but then Sometimes you make it through and you don't you don't abandon ship and, and you, you realize just stay it's a the, test. Yeah. And all of a sudden you realize that this storm blew you where your final destination was yes. supposed to be. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you just kind of kind of trust yes. the process. And like you were saying, just the way things go and and still keep your eyes out for opportunities because yeah. life will present them to you. But mm -hmm. I still believe in free will and you you got to make that conscious choice to go back in and, yeah. and or to go back in like I did. But to go forward and, oh, yeah. and, to, and to take these opportunities and essentially Keep your heart open and, you know, follow your heart, use your head and be free enough to fall and be okay yeah. with that. And yeah. know that, you know, you can get back you up, you can get back up, Yeah, you know, too you many can. of us think that the smallest thing is going to end our life. Like mm -hmm. we, that, that there's a lot of people out there that can't deal with failure on the smallest level and failure is what makes you great. If you can beat that failure and, and continue to fail, but grow and grow and fail and fail and grow. That's the key. If you're not doing that, then you're not really, I don't know, maybe you're not living, I guess. You got to be able statement. to try something. You got to, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I am, I'm a risk taker. I, I am, uh, you know, one of those people that, uh, I analyze a lot and I, I try to decipher things from all different angles and possibilities. But then at the end of the day, if it's nope, I'm going for it and whatever will be, will be. Yeah. And, and, you know, I at least now I know because knowing is half the battle. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> fucking man. Hey, fucking man, man. You're about to go deep, bro. You're talking about You're their about favorite to go shit, deep. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's that's dude. That me and him. You talk about GI Joe, and we start we start getting giddy. Get, get goosebumps. Yeah, Ooh. man. But no, like you were saying, Keith. Uh, thank you for for all the the positivity oh, and yeah, support yeah, of, of th those things. Because um, obviously, said going through some tough times, you you second guess yourself, but you. 
you make these decisions and and you just got to keep going for them and as i said keep your heart and your mind open and and uh things are happening and uh i'm i'm thankful for that storm not only where it took me but also what it taught me and um you know genuinely i'm yeah i'm really really excited for the future and ready you know and and i think that's uh Fucking another thing this that attitude, man, dude. This attitude yeah is just thank awesome, you dude. I, mean, I appreciate that and it's a long time coming no, don't necessarily I, I, think you're sitting here and no, it's no, like you know i mean to be honest but, uh, with you um i feel like i have a lot in common with you because i went through a crazy storm too we talked about that yeah he yeah. went through one and um and as crazy as the shit I was doing and involved with, I, I mean, I hate to, I don't want to ever say I regret it because I'm such a better, stronger person yep. now. You know what I mean? That I made it through. And obviously you are too. And well, thank um, you. We th I love people who went through shit and then have a story to tell. And I, those are my favorite kinds of people. They're my favorite <laughs> actors. Yeah. All of my favorite actors have those kinds of stories that and I find out later on coincidentally and yeah. things like that. So Yeah. And you always, you know, even like you're saying, acting, how can, what it taught you in your personal life, but also professionally, mm -hmm. you got all these different experiences and, and things to True, tap into too, and, yeah. and inspiration and, to and pull things from. to relate. And yeah. yeah. And, uh, no, nah, I wouldn't change it for the world, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm here right now and I'm happy to be here yeah. and, and, and the journey that has happened in the journey ahead. Still got a long way to go. You know? <laughs> I see you making all these moves just in the last couple Thank of you. months since the uh, film drop. And yeah. Stuff, so. Again, I mean, it was all these things that I, I knew was needed to happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, of course, they have a great support system at home and family and friends and all that stuff. And, and just even casual acquaintances. I mean, thank you. Thank you all sincerely for your, your support and appreciation. Yeah. Truly. It Everyone's means more than you could possibly know. But, um, yeah. Um, you got to be ready yourself, you know, and you also know when you're trying to help people motivate, it still comes down to the individual and they got to be ready to make that step. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, yeah. nah, it was the time, you know, not only in, in personal life, but professionally and just mentally, emotionally, I mean, spiritually all around, I was like, this is the time, you know, and, and it's time to, to something that's important to start going. about that being at that point is you have to have something in your life at that point when you're when you're in whatever rut it is or whatever is going on you have to have something that excites you yep and and latch on to that thing that excites you whether it's acting whether it's art whether it's podcasting <laughs> whatever the he fuck it is you yeah. latch on to that and ride that ride that out of that hole or whatever that that situation is because that'll that'll help and it'll lead to other things and, and it's crazy too, like, um, you know, acting also got me into teaching, you know, I, I got to ask uh, you about that. Yeah, I, um, you know, um, a mutual actor, um, you know, was was a teacher and she needed some help for uh, one of her creative writing classes. She knew I had a background in music and poetry and stuff like that. And she was like, hey, cut stuff in and help me with this this summer class. And I did. And she was just like, Derek, this is you, this is you too as well like you you are a fantastic teacher and i fell in love with it and i think you know ultimately a goal as a person is is i aspire to inspire you know whether that's how i live my own life or everything like that or even being there for other people and just what you're doing and and teaching and growing because that's what it's about you know yeah. no nobody's an island you got to make connections and help people and and all that stuff and the acting got me into teaching and I'm still want to do that. I mean, I, that's like the end game for me. You know what I mean? Inspired me to go back to school and to get a teaching degree oh, and wow. stuff like that. And uh, I love it. And um, especially, man, there's few things in the world that are as great as sharing your passions with yeah. people that you love and care about or people also who share those similar passions or maybe don't even know that they this is one for them yet yeah you know kind of what figuring I mean? it out and yeah kind of helping them and find their way in that. especially when it comes to acting man yeah. it's 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 so much more i'm such a believer in not only what it contributes to to kids and adults of anyone um not only how it benefits you on stage but as well as off stage and uh, you know there's always that joke like it's not rehearsal it's like it's therapy you yeah. know you show up and and you express yourself you yeah. do things you, you get around like-minded yeah. people and it's uh it's wonderful. And, yeah, and uh, when you can get into like a safe space where you know yeah. you're not going to be judged and this and that. It's that's kind of like uh it goes yeah. along the lines of, you know, there's this big mental health craze that's going on right now and it's great. And it's teaching people, it's telling people that hey, it's nice to be able to have somebody to talk to or something something that you're not in a situation where you're not going to be judged. Yeah. You can just, you know, you have that safe space. Well, you know, I like acting um is because 
<clears throat> for example, when my nephews were over here the other day, my nephew, he's, he's three and nice. he's, you just put a song on and he's just dancing just like no, no skills or whatever. doesn't give two <laughs> like fucks the entire care. world has no cares in the entire world. Right. <laughs> and I forgot who, who taught me this, but, or br brought this to my attention, but like, you know, as you grow older, you're, you know, you're obviously told to, you're, to strip that behavior away and become an adult and all these things. And you Those kind of never have, yeah, and, yeah, all these filters and filters <laughs> that you put on all over yourself. But, but when you act, you learn to strip all those things and act like that three old kid and just do whatever the yeah. fuck. And when you can find people that you can be comfortable with around to do those kinds of things, it's actually a fucking precious thing, a rare thing. Something I don't actually find in music even, even though I like music better yeah. than acting, but it's really? just, yeah, I, I enjoy music way better. I, I, I way more than acting like music's my fucking, I, it's my shit. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> go uh, ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Interrupt. But, um, but I don't know. That's that, that, that was my point. No, actually. cause I, I, I love them both and they're definitely, uh, it's one hand washing the other, but they're definitely very different. And I think especially the time that acting came into my life, music was so personal, you know, I mean, it that's was all thing, these right experiences there the and stuff yes. like that. And while I'm not necessarily saying there's not, obviously there's, there's, there's me and the character and there's a blend and those emotions and things that you see are obviously within me still too, as well, you know, but, uh, it's still someone else's it was, shit. <laughs> it was a little less intimidating and I got to, to express and to do all these things, but it wasn't necessarily so, so, so personal, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah, yeah. and, um, and that's what I needed at the time because, um, you know, personally what was going on was not even things that I was really all that excited about. Yeah. But yeah. No, that's what I know what you're saying. So that's, that's interesting. That's why I was saying when you were asking if I still do music and stuff, absolutely. I, I will always still do it because, but now I'm, I'm in a better, you know, just place overall to, no, I, I, I got a story to tell, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it feels good to, to, sh to share those personal things. Let's talk yeah, about the like movie. That. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yes, uh, let's Expo, do it. Yeah. So Expo. I wanted to ask you, how did you even get involved in it? So I, funny story, I actually, I think I said it at the, the red carpet premiere at the IPIC uh, theaters out there, which mm -hmm. thanks again to Paradox Universe and Joseph and everyone who's affiliated with that. It was an awesome event and a, a great way to showcase the, the movie and as well as to, for all the cast and crew. It was, it was a really, really awesome experience. Um, so I met Joe actually through music. So I lived uh, with a buddy, uh, Mike Ross, who I mentioned earlier. Joe. Joseph uh, Jumba. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Mike and I lived at a house right off 7th Avenue in the 101, and we had our, you know, recording set up, and we had, you know, it was a full music house. You would have loved it, man. You walk in, no TVs, no couches, just drum sets, <laughs> guitars, and Hell pianos yeah. and everything. Yeah. And, and where uh, was this at? So, like 7th, 7th Avenue, Avenue in the 101. 101. Yeah, yeah, right right next to the central where the, you know, yeah. the, the river yeah. the river is right there. Um, and uh, he responded to an ad to record some music that, you know, Mike and I were making some extra money and opening the doors for artists and come in. So him and Ye came in and we recorded a song, uh, Make You Mine. I still remember what it was called. And that's how we met. We, we both really liked each other. And, um, you know, uh, obviously social media connected and stuff like that. And then, you know, time passed and everything. And then um, I can't remember. I think Joe hit me up initially for the invert trailer i want to say that's what it was when he was doing um uh the other movie that um that he was uh, gearing up to do and um he was like yeah man you came to mine and so i went and helped out with that and uh, cool got a speaking role in that little trailer thing and then uh, again he had reached out a couple opportunities to help him with some music videos uh, some acting mm -hmm. and some behind the scenes stuff and uh, that's how we met through music and then like that and that's then cool. expo came up and he reached out to me and he's like hey man i don't know what your schedule's like but i got this opportunity and i'd love to have you audition and i was like i would love to audition so i went down to the studio and did a one-on-one -on -one audition with him and you know got the phone call oh, and, wow, that's and awesome. that was that so yeah, that yeah. is cool was, yeah. was uh were you nervous for the audition or do you uh, like I'm, how do you like how do you deal with auditions like do you I, i'm i'm one of those believers like i think i'm i'm always a little bit nervous but that's what gets me excited you yeah. know but it's kind of like one of those things as soon as you, you start going you're gone you know and it kind of washes away and, and stuff like that but uh um when you left the was, audition did you think you had it to, i mean i go in with any auditions with no expectations because you know if anything the audition yes the 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 opportunity is for the role but every opportunity 
there's opportunity and everything. So oh, still yeah, just yeah. to get out there and, and show yourself, you know, yeah. it's to meet people. You're and make learning connections how to audition too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So everyone is a win for me. But uh, walking out, I mean, he knew I had limited film experience and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, I felt good about what I did. I'm not, not actually saying that, but I was, I mean, no guarantees. And obviously there's other people, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, you don't get to, I didn't get to see them and what their, their auditions were or anything like that. But uh um, I still felt confident. That's yeah, cool. I was like, I, I definitely think I'll be considered. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's good. That's a good feeling. And, uh, and yeah, I got the call and just you know, wide smiles and everything. And it was uh, it was such a trip though because I remember it was so short uh, before we actually started filming. If I remember correctly, it seems like forever ago. Um, and uh, you know, to prepare and everything for the role. And obviously, you've seen it. Uh, definitely physically a lot different, um, just in size yeah. and everything. And that kind of not only gives you an idea of where I was and even in my personal life too because I mean everybody's got their vices and things like that and admittedly I'm a stress eater I do you know and when I'm unmotivated and, and stuff like that that's that's what I do you know and it, it's something that I I still deal with and stuff like that and um also too I just finished doing a um, a play called rabbit hole which if anybody's familiar with that um I can't David Lindsay Chabert, I can't remember the, the author's name, but I did it at Ghostlight Theater, uh, directed by Richard Powers. Oh, wow. And um, I played a dad who lost a, a, a son. So it's a couple, um, um, Howie and, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on it, Becca. And uh, um, they lost their son by a true accident. He was playing out front, you know what I mean? Chased the dog into oh, the geez. street, got hit by a car. And so... I was a little young for the role. But again, you're talking about just uh, experience auditioning. Yeah. And I went to the audition just to audition. And it was drama. And it was a little bit different from what I was into. So being a little heavier set and with the beard and everything like that to be aged up. And then Joe's like, hey, man, like, I like it. Because I was really honest. Like, I, I know this is action. I'm not going to have the time to slim down. Like, I'm just not. How much know? time was there you're talking about? I, man, like a... I want to feel like it was only like three weeks. Oh, damn. Yeah. I don't even know exactly the timeline. Because I want to, some of my questions so, to ask you so was some of that yeah. time and how you yeah. learned all the lines. you had to go train and... a little bit, right? Yeah, because... yeah. We did We did do, um, you know, Richard Ryan. Um, you were oh, there yeah. for that class. Yeah, Richard we did uh, um, the film combat and everything like that. And um, that was awesome. And, um, oh, man. James Gines, we had um, out with him to do a little bit of, of military, you know, weaponry and stuff like that, firearms and everything. That was really cool to do. Um, but it was pretty limited uh, for me. Not not necessarily just for my own schedule. Like I said, I, I think I literally finished that show and then started the movie like the following week or wow. something like that. It was a very, very short time frame for me to turn around and jump in, especially go to my first like real drama you know real heavy theater and then go to my very first no, feature sure. film and to be a lead and it's action and it's i mean uh richard the character is totally different than i am oh, personally sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything Fuck like yeah. that and i remember joe you know it's like Derek, you gotta a little bit more minimal you gotta bring it down a little bit and everything. <laughs> so that was a challenge and it was really really awesome well that's that's a good thing though right i mean that's also helping your acting I yeah mean, you're, you're learning as you go i mean you have to do things in order to get better at them oh, so yeah. and also that that transition in different languages of of theater and film like they're very close i'm not trying to say like you know i'm a believer that it's it's both but genuinely theater you're again you're you're presenting to all these people right in front of you you know versus the camera that's right yeah. there you don't have you to know? project so yourself it's, as much it's, yeah. it's different yeah. yeah it's definitely different but uh it was an awesome awesome experience all around like everyone that i worked with and uh you know joe's direction and um working with chef and titus and you of course oh, yeah. and everything like that and um it was it was awesome definitely a, a eye-opening experience just as an actor not only for the character but as well as behind the scenes and just how essentially movies are made mm -hmm. you know what i mean and all that stuff so it was a uh, you know such a priceless experience and uh is awesome did you so um awesome. <laughs> so you get this script i mean how many pages was it how to have been i don't even remember I mean, it's a feature film head. so it's 80 plus for yeah sure. I, so um how did you go about memorizing your lines do you have a certain process that you so have or I, and, and also I, did you try to do it scene by scene and figure out the schedule of the day okay i need to learn these things. you know what i mean like because i've never had to do a full feature and i'm actually come upon one myself so i'm cool. trying to figure everything Congrats, out man. so i just thought i would ask you like how, how how do you tackle a feature film script so um with my experience before that it was just tackling 
pardon me, um, theater. Yeah. And uh, my approach to scripts is I read the whole story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I read the whole thing all the way through, so I get the the overall yeah. overview of everything. And then kind of go down and, and break down the character and relationships and stuff. And then kind of you said like scene by scene because, you know, um, one thing you always got to remember is what happened right before, you know, yes, totally. this scene, you know, and how were they feeling? And then obviously the 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 um, variety of shoot days, you know, because shooting out of order and totally. stuff like yeah, that. That's, that's it's trying to think get, like where, really where was hard. I, where was this character before this, even though I shot that. You know what I mean? Like what actually happened right yeah. before the scene. And for me, for memorizing, like I like to read a, a lot, but my favorite thing to do is I record it and then I listen. So that way I'm a very active person and even driving or if I'm skateboarding or going oh, yeah. on a bike ride or anything like that, I can listen to it. And then that's that also really, frees, really smart. That frees yeah. my hands and my body up to practice blocking and movements and all that stuff and, and everything. And then I can live look in the mirror and live action you know work on reactions and stuff like that and everything and then one thing that i actually implemented doing started implementing in my um my process of character breakdown and stuff like that um actually came from one of my psychology um classes i took where we did like the 20 questions of i am where basically you answer the question i am 20 times the first time you do it you're just sitting down relaxed you know and what you think of yourself and then the second time you do it but before you answer you look in the mirror and I've incorporated that and then I answer as the character. And that kind of helps me, oh, wow. what do I have in common with this character and what do I, where is those disconnects? Where can I learn and where can they learn from me? And how does that complete the puzzle, so wow, to speak? Really and, and everything. Yeah, that's yeah and it's, it's a crazy, you know, introspective thing. I've actually done it in some of my, mm-hmm. my acting classes that I've taught and stuff like that for kids. So wait a and, minute, uh, you got this from a psychology class yep. and just kind of made this up? Yep. This is like you need you should write a book about that, bro. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That's genius. Yeah. Dude. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Started that. All, so because you said the I am is you do it for yourself, yourself, and then you said then you turn it into it as in the character. As the character, that's fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. That reminds and you me know of, a little um, bit about that character already because you read yeah. the script. So. Yeah, and then also you know it's all about relationships and who they talk to and how they talk and objectives. They're going to talk to this character different than this character based upon the relationship and totally, what their yeah. objective Isn't is. Isn't that, that so? It kind of well, more importantly, the disconnect from yeah. yourself of the character. Mm-hmm. That's like the the triggiest part to find yeah is, and w- where are you gonna need to push yourself exactly you know yeah. and more research that you need yes. to do and who do you need to talk to who do you know in your bank that has similar traits of this and been in similar situations because like i said doing rabbit hole i'm not a father i've never been married and you know i got two two awesome nephews and you know obviously being a teacher i've been around kids and all this stuff like that but the loss from a father and especially something that's like a, a, yeah. a, and i should just say a parent in general you know um Especially something that just is an accident. Yeah. And it just happens because that's what happens in life. Yep. Things happen that you have no control over that you might not necessarily get any answers to. And going through that. So that obviously for Howie and Rabbit Hole, that was, um, you know, I asked a lot of people, what would you feel? What would you, how would you feel about that person? Because the whole thing was, like I said, the kid ran out on the street and then got hit by a car by a young teenager. But he wasn't like intoxicated or anything like that. An like it was one of those times where you went down to change the radio station on the old oh, pickup Jesus. truck and accident. thought, thought yeah. swerved to miss the dog, but didn't see the kid. Fuck. Yeah. You know, and doing that research and stuff, and and how would how would how would I respond to that person, me personally, and how is you that similar to how how he's responding in the story, or or you know Richard in the movie or anything like what's that? What's funny so, about yeah. this you saying the story right now is I was just having a conversation with Blanzia last night and. We were talking about, you know, hey, would you stay in Arizona and do you want to stay here? And I'm like, what about you, man? Like, California is calling your name. He's like, I don't I don't think I could. You know, I don't want to be that far away from my mom and my family. And I'm like, well, why don't you have your mom go out there? And she lost a kid. Um, her son died in a drunk driving Sorry, accident. Man. And and he said she'll never leave because her son's buried here. Right. And like that's. The other thing, you know, you will never when as a parent losing a child, you'll never get over that ever. Yeah, that's a hard fucking thing, man. Yeah. I can imagine that. So, that's the other thing is like I mean, life is not only different, it's sometimes it's not worth living, right? Yeah, well, and I also think, you know, when you're so dealing with loss or change or or anything like that where you you've had an experience that maybe you don't understand now or or anything um you kind of you kind of always live with it 
you know and it's just you get better at managing it yes you know what i mean and yeah, um, yeah, i mean even somebody who me personally like i i have anxiety and depression i get panic attacks from time to time yeah. i know what it's like to be in a downward spiral and i know that even though i'm i'm feeling really good right now and i got a lot of positive things going i know that's still inside me and i know i still need to be conscious of that and manage it and that's what's gonna keep me from from having major episodes in the future and everything like that and and i don't necessarily i mean even when it comes down to like um like addiction and stuff like that it's it's i feel like with with certain things like that like there's no definite finish line like oh it's over it's just i'm gonna keep going and i'm getting better at it and managing it and, rec and recognizing those, yeah. those those red flags when you're slipping back into mm -hmm. those things and, and you know what that and those, being conscious is, of is boredom is most of the yeah. time and that's why i try to keep myself <laughs> fucking busy because when I'm when I'm bored is when I start doing dangerous things, man. Yeah. And so Idle I, hands, man. And so I'm to the I point. Feel you. And this may sound crazy, but I'm to the point where I schedule my weeks and I write down almost every like hour what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna read during this time. I'm watching a movie. I'm fucking doing this. I'm working the you know or whatever. Yeah. So fucking. And, and it feels good because it? well because it's if it's not planned out then. I'll just start fucking drinking and I don't know who knows where it's going to go from there. You know what yeah. I mean? And, um, I want to, you know, I want to keep that straight path. You know? Absolutely, man. So. Yeah. Waking up I, early and getting I, things done. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Think, I do. Yeah. I think when it comes to that and addiction, also the main thing is that at some point, either you decide that you want to feel better or you just want, you just don't want to feel Deal. anything. Yeah. Right. And so if you feel that you want to feel better, then you're not only beating addiction by just, you know, not being wanting wanting to be addicted to something anymore but you're also saying i just want to feel okay i don't want to feel shitty when you're that deep into addiction you're not doing it because you're getting high anymore you're because you're sick you're yep. sick so you just want to feel this is not good fun anymore <laughs> and, 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 but, but there's but there's something that's crazy about acting is that it's got to be tough when you go and deal with some of those having to get into some of those roles and you've never dealt with that because oh like a, yeah like people who who well you could say that for anything though as, but as that's like, what i mean like yeah. even talking about kids uh, parents yeah. that have lost their kids now you or a straight man playing a gay guy yes. or even or something but, and you've got to go do be... some 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 work and find out like what that's like so you're going to go talk to a parent that's lost a child man that's got to be rough sometimes right i mean which it is it definitely is and um but at the same time you know i know for me personally in my experience um you got to respect other people's boundaries and yeah. some people's like hey i'm reaching out to you i know this might not just be something you want to talk about but you know i would love to talk to you about it yeah. and if and you never necessarily know like some people are just i want to talk about it and yeah, yeah i want to help you and even if it's not just you in general but just to speak their experiences and and that might help other people down the yeah. road too. I mean, because that's essentially acting and art and it's storytelling. It's making connections and just sharing the human experience of life with with people. Yeah. Because um, a lot of times you can get really, really stuck in your own head of your own perceptions and stuff like yeah. that. And, and uh, Think about you got You got to go outside the box. And I, I always say, like, you know, when it comes to darkness, a lot of people are, are scared of the dark. And I don't necessarily mean like literally, but even figuratively. Yeah. And there's a lot of dark when you go introspective. And you don't necessarily know how far down that rabbit hole you're going to go. And, and All a lot you of need times, is mushrooms. And yeah, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. It. They're on the yeah. wall. Um, I'm serious. You yeah. take mushrooms, uh, you'll, you'll find, figure all that shit out. Yeah. But you, <laughs> we, we, we tend to think that, you know, bad stuff is in the darkness for whatever reason you, you associate that but essentially you don't know what is in the pitch black until you're brave enough to go in there and turn on the light yeah you know with mushrooms and, yeah right <laughs> i'm not <laughs> joking whatever <laughs> mushrooms yeah. hey, fucking... <laughs> hey what, again and there's 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 a lot of different paths and different ways to to bring it well, well my point That's is cool. um a lot of people can't figure that shit out on their own and never will and but mushrooms can help you if yeah. you can't ever figure that out so yeah <laughs> talk to people experiment figure out what works for you yeah yeah exactly. you know absolutely yeah absolutely meditation whatever it is yeah mental health talking to somebody doesn't matter yep. yeah um do you i was gonna yeah. oh, get help no go ahead um i was gonna ask you like what was your uh like the most fun you had on set of expo and what was like do you have like an embarrassing experience also that you can share like a oh, funny man. embarrassing I'm, one i'm trying maybe to maybe fuck no. up a scene or something um <laughs> probably just my beefy nipples on, on screen for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing um uh i mean yeah you know what out, so let me ask you about big, this i big forgot about brothers this. so yeah you, you know? had a shirtless yeah, scene yeah. Uh -huh. were you nervous for that and yeah, the reason why i, I got... asked is because i had to do i did a full nude yeah. scene for fox no. 
Hansen nice. thing, and I cool. I had three days to prep for it, and I was googling like Hugh Jackman's workout and all this crazy <laughs> shit. Be <laughs> like, dude, it's insane. When when um actors have like a shirtless scene for three seconds in a movie or whatever, they train for five months for that shit. Yeah, dude. yeah. And and not only that, like um uh Wolverine, he'll fucking he won't drink water for three days before just so the muscles and everything will just be popping, popping through out. and yeah, all this shit. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, did you so not give a fuck or you're like fuck? No, it, no. It, or, Admittedly, full disclosure, <laughs> I actually had a conversation with Joe about it, and it was um, definitely it was it was a lot of me personally too. Because admittedly, I've I've always kind of had body issues. I mean, everybody it, does. Yeah, exactly. Everybody. I yep. mean, growing everybody. up, I mean, the bright red hair, the small eyes, pale skin, and stuff like that. Went through puberty earlier than a lot of kids had. I mean, literally could have been a poster child for acne medication. Like it was bad. I'm really actually fortunate that the fair skin didn't scar up a lot because yeah, it was yeah. it was that aggressive. And again, yeah. I told you, like for me, like when I'm stressed and that I I eat you mm -hmm. know and it's not necessarily I'm not saying this stuff to like body shame anyone or no, anything no, like I, that no, do you good. but we also have this idea you have this idea of like so when you look at Demir and when you look at who who am I and what is how do I view myself and what I want myself to be but in that time, obviously, I was still searching, but I was on my way, making moves and take putting myself out there, which was good. You don't got to necessarily be 100% ready to go to go. Sometimes you just got to jump in oh, for and sure. then learn, yeah. you know? But I remember- That's most of acting, is I that? told Joe, I was like, hey, man, I got to be honest with you. I'm a little self-conscious about this um, just for personal. And then also, this is definitely- the one way I feel the most disconnected to Richard, you know what I mean? I mean, being ex-military and all that stuff and everything. And then, um, you know, Joe's was, was, was patient and he's like, well, Derek, you know, remember Richard used to be in the military, you know, and he's depressed right now. And there's a lot of things, other things going on and his body's going to change and everything like that. And he's like, I, I still would like to shoot it and we'll see if it makes it in and everything like that. But I understand your concerns, but, um, I would like to still do it. And I said, all right. And you know what? In the time, I'm like, God, you know, but, and, but I got to say, Joe, I was just going to no, say no, that. No, yeah. Joe, Joe, <laughs> thank you. Because you know what? Now that it's out there, guess what? I saw it. And while it might necessarily be the most flattering thing, guess what that taught me? To be okay. Yeah. Fuck it. And yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't limit yourself about this idea and these doubts and these self conscious things that you have about yourself because. Not only did it, it's already out there. So what else, what else is yes. there? And I then, you yes. know, and then also too, it just also motivated me to know that, man, it was just inspiring to see how far I've come with even in the two years of when we shot that yeah, yeah, in a lot awesome. of ways, not just physically, but everything. Yes. And uh, man, I'm, I'm thankful it made it in. But Fuck for yeah. embarrassing, I mean, you know, it definitely stands out. It definitely is a, a really good angle out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everything like that. But that's probably <laughs> the most, quote unquote, embarrassing thing to say. <laughs> yeah. And there was there was a, a that's scene. only embarrassing to you. I didn't yeah. think anything of that. I don't think no, anyone no, else no. did. You but know, but and that's just, again, yeah, yeah. if you ask me personally, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But but hey, it is what it is, and yeah. again, I'm I'm glad it still happened and everything so, like that. But like I you could, were saying for for Hugh Jackman, real quick, sorry. No. Like for some of those scenes, and Richard, remember, like he he takes the uppers and and the downers for the um you know that he got from the doctor. And yeah, so he didn't like really that. have to do that. No, no, and um, yeah. I mean, I still a, a couple of them, I still popped, and it was really nice, like the sour sour um uh, uh liquid yeah, in like yeah. the capsules and stuff, and it was really good and tasty <laughs> and everything like that. But for some of those scenes, like you were saying, how did I feel before the scene? That's right. I'm on this this crazy drug right now. I got to get a little fired up. And I'm not I'm not a method actor. I kind of joke that I'm like mini method. You know, I, I incorporate some method, um, you know, practices into some of my stuff. But before certain scenes like, you know, um, doing push ups or running or literally like get getting angry and, and beating yourself in the yeah. chest. I mean, you know, like. Just getting amped because, I mean, if I'm supposed to be fired up, then ah, I got to get fired up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to make this happen. Otherwise, all right, that was that was okay. Yeah. You know it's not going to look real. Yeah, and of course, it's it's probably really hysterical for all the people that were watching me scream around like a lunatic and run That's around. That's how it is on sets, stuff, though. And, and it, they it was, should it know that. Yeah, I'm sure they were fun. No, I'm just sure they were, no, sure they were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, half people giggling, half people like, That's pretty cool. You, you, know? you told your story about how Joseph, what Joseph said to you. And one of the things that I noticed about Joseph when he was on the show is that he seems like that person yeah. that like he's he's very like cool about oh, like yeah. hey man and he knows how to talk and and he's a good director in that he's in awesome. that in that fact and very understanding and and calm I yes mean, and very that's, that's, calm that yeah. is such that is such a vital 
thing. I know when he was on, I watched his interview. Yeah, yeah. And he spoke about people's energies on set and stuff like that, and just and people's energies in life in general. Yeah. Who you have in your circle and stuff, and um, him even having a, such a calm presence, even on some really stressful days of things that were within our control that got messed up or things that were with outside of our control. And um, man, it, it was so great to always have turned to a director that is going to talk to you in a calm voice and is going to be understanding and is is going to communicate with you and 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 help you through whatever is going on whether if it's Sorry. an out no you're good man totally good i appreciate you man. thank you yeah yeah <laughs> oh geez if, oh chris chris yeah tighten us right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh fired but, no man you gotta <laughs> tighten it really yeah really yeah, tight get it get it get it tight. there you go <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. no, it was so great. It was so great to have his uh, his presence out there, and uh, and truly, man, thank you, thank you, Joe, for the opportunity and just just everything, because uh, you know you're a big part of my journey, and uh, I I respect you not only personally but professionally, and I wish you nothing but the best, and I look forward to the next one with you, my man. I really, really oh, do. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. um, no, it was awesome. Can it was you tell awesome. people, um, in case they haven't just watched the other episode, where they yeah. can find Expo? So Expo right now is uh, on demand in a, a lot of different uh, cable outlets. I know Spectrum, Xfinity, I think. Um, Cox, I think uh, Joseph yeah. said it was supposed to come out on DirecTV yep. soon. And then Amazon Video, I think, is supposed to be soon to follow. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty so, sure. Yeah. But if there's any other questions, obviously check out Paradox Universe and everything online on Facebook and the YouTube. Watch the reels and everything like that. And you can definitely find all the information and stream it. I think it's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine to rent um anything like that and like i said more streaming services and everything will be available shortly yeah. that's what i've been told i'm waiting yeah. for the update too definitely so. go support yeah. um it, yeah. it's, it's such a great idea that he has that joseph has and the universe that he's created yeah man it's cool to, to have that stuff uh you know have a little hometown pride and see the stuff that's i love when out. all the, totally. the cut shots are like from phoenix and shit yeah, yeah. Like overhead shots and it's really cool like so. i know that oh there's the tunnel i know that oh i know that store yeah, yeah, yeah i know yeah. i was actually doing the yeah the tunnel yeah, yeah, yeah i was doing that <laughs> Yeah, it was rad, man. No, it was really cool. And and we shot um, uh, mostly in central Phoenix and then some out in Levine. And then um, um, I think that's actually where the abduction was taking place was a house out there in Levine. And then obviously Globe for the, you know, the, yeah, um, uh, the final at. thing and everything like that. And um, and then we went up like by Seven Springs Road way out there, like northeast, like basically – you know, Cave Creek wrapped all the way around, keep going past the northeast end of Scottsdale. And that's actually where a lot of the, the reenactment scenes were shot. And, every, and I got to tell you, there was a ton of bugs out there. And I thought it was cool because it's like <laughs> it's, it's it. And I was I was really there was one take. I know like I'm sitting there and I'm glassing, you know, and I felt the bug go right in my mouth, crawl <laughs> over my tongue and then crawl back out. And I'm just like, just stay focused because <laughs> Richard wouldn't move because if he moved, he'd get shot. And I was hoping that wouldn't be the one that made it in because oh, I was yeah. Like, oh, that's so badass, Derek. You know, but uh, it was cool and um, um, definitely had a blast shooting shooting all of all of it. To be honest with you, it was so cool and it was fun to get roughed up by the police yeah. and everything get shoved into the door. I remember the first time we did it, I was like, I'm gonna fight you back, and they're like, All right, and I got away. And they were like, I was like, I'm gonna fight you back. <laughs> and then so the one that actually so were made those it, actual like off duty police officers? Were I don't it? believe so. Okay. No, okay. no, I, was about I don't to say. think so. I think one, uh, one of them was. Um, um, I don't want to give too much of the movie yeah, yeah. away, but uh, one of them was in one of the scenes and everything like that. But uh, yeah, funny story um, for that one. The last time, uh, I think it's the one that that got um, that made it to the final cut. Uh, I actually did get a cut of my cheek from the door because, like, man, they, I was like. Go for it. Like yeah. I, I'm that type of actor. Like I, I like realism. Go for it. I'm not necessarily gonna put myself in in in, yeah. in crazy situations if I really think it's like yeah. But if I'm like, you know what, I could get a little roughed up or I could do this if I think it's gonna be better for the film. Then yeah, like do it. Even on like theater, you know, I don't do stage slaps. I always tell people like, you can slap me. Like I've I've been <laughs> slapped in the face before. Like and, and it's also a, a a great wow factor too for the audience. Like oh that was a real yeah. one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they feel even more. They can believe it more because yeah. it's actually happening. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, anything to make the story more believable. Absolutely. Or, or at least not to take the audience out of the out story. Out of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And commitment to it and everything like that. What do you think was harder, the um, action scenes or learning dialogue? Um, I w admittedly, it was my first heavy action experience. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd have to say that um, just because of just... Um, you know, a lot of things can be mentally exhausting doing over and over again, especially really emotional scenes and stuff like that, but physically exhausting over and over yeah. and over again. And even like, okay, you're going to do this. You're going to get all hyped up. You're going to fight. And then you got to 
bring it down and now you got to not breathe. And it's like your body is and then you got to, <laughs> you know, and it's just like yeah. you're breathing, Derek. I'm sorry. I have to, you know, yeah. what I mean? but um, it was it was cool. And um, um, I still love it. And obviously training with with uh, Richard Ryan was was He's totally awesome. awesome experience. And, you know, having him let me come over in the gym and hit the bag and stuff like that. And uh, no, it was great. So equally challenging, but also equally as rewarding, because I think it translated very, very well. And I was I was feeling it. You know, and I'm I'm definitely one of those people like if I'm feeling this energy and I'm feeling good about it, I'm not just saying everyone's going to feel the same thing. But I obviously that's that's yeah. that's got to be something, you know, yeah. what I mean? yeah, if that's I feel, why you're there yeah, yeah. emitting this energy and I'm picking up on it, then I think it's going to translate <laughs> fairly well. Then so. after you're all tired from shooting this action sequence, you're trying to breathe. They're like, all right, shut up. We need room tone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, fuck. <laughs> Like after, but, like after you shoot, the sound guy has to get like a minute or two minutes of just silence of the room, mm -hmm. just for the tone of the room to put into the mix of the sound. Oh you know, yeah, so. yeah. But for dialogue <laughs> and script memorization, I've I've always had one of those brains. Admittedly, I was that kid that could sit in school and just watch, you know, what was written on the board or read and then memorize it. Yeah. Um. So and again, I I really think a lot of that comes to me listening to it, because um you know when I when when I read it, I I read it still like I hear it. You know, with the voice, you know, like the old joke is you are now hearing Morgan Freeman's voice as you read this with this yeah. picture, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And uh, but recording it and then you can experiment with different tones and reactions and stuff. The last like few that. actors then, have said that the yeah, recording method, man. Seems it, like and, the and again, it just it allows it allows you to. I don't know. It's even one of those things, too. Like, you can lay in bed and listen to your, your script as you fall asleep. You know, you can do it as you're brushing your teeth in the morning. And, you know, repetition, you know, practice yes. makes makes permanent, you yes. know, like in your brain and everything like that. And it becomes second nature. You're just in it and it, your brain's got it in the immediate files to reach and go for, you know. And yeah. um, that definitely helps me a lot. So, fortunately, script memorization is not that difficult for me. I don't necessarily want to say it's because I'm like, oh, so naturally gifted. But... I think I've I've refined my process and how it works for me the best, which which makes it easier for me. Yeah, you got to yeah. unlock. That's mm -hmm. cool. Do you still um, work at the uh, what is it called the Murder and a Meal? Or yeah, I actually got a show. Uh, really? If I can plug it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. I'm actually next anything, next dude. Friday. Uh, next Friday and Saturday, I'm going to be at the Arizona Broadway Theater. I'm going to be playing Matt Drillum um, for uh, Murder on the Movie Set. So if you want to come check it out, Friday evening and then Saturday matinee and then Saturday evening, and that's next week. I think it's the the um, 31st and the 1st or 30th and the 31st. Can you 31st explain to them what like a Murder and a Meal is to so, people? So, yeah, Murder and a Meal is a um, semi-scripted, semi-improv uh, murder mystery comedy um, where you go and you get a three-course meal, you know, salad, uh, dinner, entree, and then a dessert. You get a show. You get audience interaction in between while you're having your meal. That's a lot of improv and stuff like that coming out and interacting, which is great. And then you got to solve a, mi a murder mystery at the end. And um, they're a blast, man. And I hear they're a lot great. of people talking about them. They're great. Do it. Especially yeah. if you're kind of like, a lot of you people know, at work are talking about it, and a variety of people are going to enjoy it because there's a lot of different elements. There's the improv element, you know, the the um, the audience participation element, the script. There's the mystery element, problem solving, you know, and it's it's overall a good time. Yeah, like, and, and you're out with friends and family, and you're gonna you're gonna seat at a big table with strangers. Excuse me, too, as well. You're gonna meet people. And it, uh, it, there's alcohol, I don't like right? strangers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, everyone's a stranger <laughs> until just you playing. meet them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, it's it, it really is a blast. And I got to tell you, it's fun to watch and it's fun to do. So if anybody's literally, if you're on the fence and you want to take you want to take a jump and you want to try something out, it's a lot, a lot of fun. And yeah. you'll learn a lot, not only about scripting, you know, reading scripts and memorizing, but also how to to improv and you know thinking on your feet and i i think you know hip-hop really definitely helped with that because obviously freestyle i'm not just saying i was ever the strongest freestyler but you know i think any hip-hop artist that does it routinely has had those moments where you're like man i am four to six bars ahead in my ahead in my head <laughs> and i'm just still just going and you know <laughs> that really helped a lot, and yeah. and also how to react to people's yeah. reactions and stuff. I wish like I could freestyle like and, that. And, <laughs> I, and I, I, can I, get, I can't even do like, that. Hey, no, I, get like I can't words. even sit down and write it. Like if I tried. <laughs> well, it's funny. That's actually one of the. So I write in music and just uh, even things in general in a lot of different ways. You know, sometimes you uh, drive in and it's silent, and all of a sudden just something clicks in your head, and you 
you think about it or you hear this song and then or this beat or whatever and you get inspired to write i know it, but or, when i do that it sucks yeah no, well, <laughs> hey, hey, like i do that I'm like, again oh, don't yeah, yeah. let what is this horror hey yeah. hey hey <laughs> Let other people have an opinion. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, because it no, is you're I'm right. I know what you're saying. Because but I've there's been some down things that road. in your own world that you just know is horrible. Well, you know? like, let's be how honest. How often do you do you say like uh, this is calling Keith out, and oh, he knows God. this? How often do you say like uh, I don't think this is very good, and you show it to me? I'm like, dude, that was fucking awesome, yeah. bro. Yeah. So, and especially okay. if it's coming from a trusted a source fact, too. I'm not a good rapper. But here's the other thing about that: <laughs> it also is good to accept constructive criticism. criticism. Yep. If you cannot accept it and not and and here's the other thing. I can people accept that. people can hear the criticism, but they don't take it in because they they think, oh, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm yeah. completely. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not saying yeah, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about everybody. Yeah, yeah. Out I love there. it. But it, it, let's be honest. If you actually saw everybody's first attempt yes. at whatever something that they I've did, I've been rapping for years. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'm dropping an album next year. <laughs> you know Let's collaborate. Let's do it. Just give Let's me like, a, just give me a few bars and we'll yeah. see where it goes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll write a we'll write a rap for the podcast. You know what though? Um, really honestly, the uh, I I really love making beats and oh, Roomba, he's part some. of the show. Um, cool. Me and him were really into making hip hop beats for a little bit. As a matter of fact, um. The reason why we we stopped is we were, we were making some beats for some badass hip hop artists here in the valley. And long story short, we were doing it out of my um, parents' bedroom. It was when I was really young, like mm -hmm. probably like early twenties. And um, we we're all making beats in the bedroom. And then all of a sudden, uh, we hear a knock on the window: bang, 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 bang. And then two hip hop dudes look at each other. They go, "Baby mama." And then we, me and Oompa, are like, "What the fuck?" And we run outside, and these two biggest broads you've ever seen in your life are like get the fuck home freddy motherfucker what are you doing <laughs> and one of them the other rapper or his name was freddy she fucking just attacked him started grabbing his hair and trying to pull his eyes out and shit he pushed her off of her this is like midnight all my neighbors come outside and he's got his hands up like this and she's like i'm gonna kill you bitch he's back and he's like i'm gonna knock you out bitch i'm gonna knock you out <laughs> and he just goes like this bink and then she just drops to the floor and my neighbors go, call the fucking police and hit her. <laughs> and then um, I'm like, fuck, you guys get to get it the fuck out of here. What the fuck? And then my mom and dad come out. The cops are there and shit. Like, so no more hip hop no beats. No more hip hop beats, dude. And so. I was going to say, dude, that's, that's. No more hip hop beats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, then Halo came. We were talking oh, yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Halo yeah, came yeah, up right yeah. around. Right when I turned 21, yeah. Halo dropped. And I was like. Uh, I'll do. I'll play Halo. Call my yeah. now. So that's definitely a a, a lane shift. <laughs> yeah, go from hip hop beats to playing. Halo. No, we were talking but about like that um, Game Spy. Do you remember that before Xbox? Was it, it was Game Spy, right? That yeah, is you had spot. to set it that's up spot. over your computer. Yeah, yeah and you got the yeah. game. Yeah, and we'd run. In I was there. just. That's so crazy that you're gonna say that. I was <laughs> he just brought that up to me. That up. No, like two seconds before you oh, brought that up, oh. I was gonna be like, "Do you remember how you used to have to land? Yeah. How, how you in order to you have team making? You'd land, trick the internet. It was like you'd land, but." I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. yeah. It was like a program that was made just specifically for playing Halo 1 oh, over like online. Said, yeah. Thankfully, my buddy Steve-O, like he was, like I said, he was the whiz with that and got it all set we up. We were talking about how we like probably that. played each other oh, yeah. back then. I'm sure yeah. we did. Especially Especially the small knit yeah. Yeah. Uh, people, you know. Yeah. It started in 96 yeah. with Quake. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, there was a bunch of games you can play on there. Because yeah. it would suck because you couldn't always find a game, so... You'd set it up, and then I would like go make like a sandwich or something. All of a sudden, ding, ding, ding! Yeah. Everyone, they're all fuck yeah. There's players, and then like it would you'd play for ten seconds, it'd lag out like fuck, and then you'd have to go and do, <laughs> fucking start vacuuming, doing chores. And then twenty minutes later, ding, ding, ding! Fuck yeah! Run back in, f hopefully get it. Because the let's yeah. admit it, the the lag sucked on yeah. there. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you hosted, that was a big thing. Because oh, yeah. if you hosted, you didn't have the lag. Yeah. So. People wouldn't do it unless they were hosting. <laughs> so then you just wouldn't have games because everybody wants to host. Yeah. Or you do like a best of three and you'd trade off hosts and then yeah. you'd yeah. flip a coin for like who nice. hosted the What third. was your favorite map? On um, Halo Comet. Okay. Well, oh, this is noob as fuck, but OG just because of getting into it. I'll never forget the eight on eights on Blood Gulch. I know that's the newest nah, thing oh, to yeah, say no, all vehicles. Dude. But for competitive style... um. I don't even know if I'm probably that. chill out 4v4 just either oddball is that, is, was chill out the one that had all the like the the teleporters yeah yeah, the, yeah. it had a bunch yeah. of it didn't have a bunch of teleporters but it had, it had a, a bunch couple. of like little things you could do throw grenades and, to knock things down yeah, and yeah. Stuff. we yeah. were we were so nerded out on it that it evolved to that all those overshills and power-ups and all those things were actually on a timer 
So we you would buy a stock. Uh, uh, there's a professional Halo team that figured this out. So yeah. when you'd go to events, um, you'd have a stopwatch on your um, controller, and once the game started on your Duke, on your Duke, and then once the game started, you hit your timer. So at a minute. You know, the camo would drop or a minute and a half, the rockets and the overshield would drop. And these things would constantly go on. So as a team, you'd be like, okay, you're going to go get overshield. Yeah. You're going to go. Yeah. But the other team's doing that too, you know, trying to get the power up. So it became like fucking game of chess, really. Halo yeah, 1 was strategy. like one of the baddest fucking games. It right? was. It was a lot of fun. Right? Combat evolved. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm calling it Halo yeah. 1, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. So did you play with Brenda back then or something? No, or like how? I was saying, we you, you know went to elementary school, school together. You just and then knew she was I into moved. it because I, I was well, talking about female so, gamers. Yeah, so. I think I was actually telling Brian the story. Yeah, when you were before we got started. So um, I dated a girl um, after high school, but that we um, uh, it was crazy how life goes. You, you go separate ways and you run back into yeah. each other. You know, um, and uh, we dated for a while and we went, uh, she was still going to Deer Valley and I was already going to Sunrise by then. And we went to um, a, a party and she was like, oh, don't worry. You know, there'll be some people from elementary school there and everything like that. And I saw Brenda there. Oh, so, sure. of course, we caught up and was like, hey, what you been doing and this and the other thing. And she had told me that she's like, oh, I've been competitive in Halo. And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and that's it. Just, you yeah. know, and she's, that was she's so, so, crazy. so awesome. It's so crazy because awesome. um, like we went to a tournament in Orlando and she uh, met a professional gamer there her name's andrew and now they're married and they nice. have two we have two uh, i have two nephews and they're nice. like halo babies pretty much so <laughs> halo pretty much uh i remember yeah, mtv yeah. did a little documentary on brenda well no no no, it no wasn't not on, on her no. it was on the team no, not even female gamer no it was actually on just um pms right no it was on gaming in general but they they mentioned them and brenda was like kind of yeah like, they showed shots of her but she was like in electronic gaming i was Monthly, about to say and that was around the same time magazines. man that was then. nuts man yeah Very cool. i used to always laugh at keith because you know he had he was the one that wanted to do it and he just used his sister as like a practice tool oh, and she became the badass right yeah, no well, i was i was always better admittedly be uh, admittedly well. don rizzo you know my sister <laughs> he's my like i'm not getting involved in this <laughs> My sister still jokes that she she wanted to be an actor and do all this stuff and and, and shout outs to her too as well Desiree. She still can. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's why I tell her all the time. Yes, you're never too anyway, old for acting. But uh, you know, she got me into a lot, exposed me to a lot of music, being my older sister and stuff like how, that. How how many years older? So she's four and a half years older than me. So wow. Yeah. yeah that's so just we, like me and my brother. That's probably yeah. our age. How. How old are you? Never mind ask her. Uh, I just I turned thirty four uh, yeah, in so, June. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We must have went. Did she go to school? Yeah, we must have went to school. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. She's yeah. probably uh, she probably had a cool. She's gonna watch this and be like, I know. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 she's gonna tell me I can't believe it. <laughs> but uh, you know, we got to joke around. That, like, yeah, she's like, that's what I always wanted to do, and now you're doing it. And I I still joke like, you know, but still seriously, like, well, hey, you know, yeah. you kind of you kind of introduced over. me to well, and also like. I wouldn't be doing any of what I've done if it wasn't for for you as well. And luckily, our 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 brother and sister relationship is very close. And uh, yeah. you know, obviously, we still had our you know issues, just like any any like, family yeah. has. But uh, nah, man, we hung out a lot. And um, you know, and she's she's one of my biggest supporters, and I love her dearly. And uh, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It's just really really cool. But and like you said, it's never too late, Desiree. Just go. No, for seriously, it. some of the best actors didn't even start until they're like in their fucking forties yeah. and fifties and shit. And um, I have no rush into you know what I mean. No. Like I'm just taking my time with it now. I know it's a long process. I feel like I'm still getting my feet wet and stuff. So. Well, I took I took one theater class in high school, one, and um, I did two monologues. I can't remember the name of the play from the dramatic monologue, but I remember the character's name was Mark Taggart, and he had gone crazy. He had. Um, murdered his father and he was he had like had his girlfriend at the time um you know like kidnapped her and was like basically keeping her in a safe house while people were looking for him and stuff like that and he's just going crazy and that was my first dramatic monologue that i did it was this totally insane person and then i did charlie brown uh, only lonely people eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> nice. and i loved that experience i really really did and uh, my theater teacher then i think her name was um mrs woodward i want to say um she was like derek i really think you should get involved in into the art program and the theater program here and i was like I, i've always been an athletic dude so i was you know baseball and football and then plus skateboarding was was also a huge part of my life and i had already started getting serious about the music and working and everything like that and i was like you know what I, I just, now's not the time, but I did really enjoy it. And, you know, maybe in the future some way. And then, like I said, that dinner theater and that popped into my head. And it's like, I think this is the time, you know what dude. I mean? And 
And that was it. So I still have that VHS somewhere of those monologues. <laughs> somewhere in my 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 catalog. Just put those on YouTube, bro. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Me with my trendy <laughs> the trendy beach bleach blonde hair and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any uh other projects that you're working on now that are coming so, up? So um, you know, uh, I got I got to make an announcement. I know I posted on Facebook, but okay. I want to make an announcement now. I recently have been signed to the Layton Agency oh, yeah, for representation. Badass. So, um, really, my focus right now is getting that, you know, taking that next step professionally, getting representation out there. I mean, commercial shoots, TV, film, just anything right now, and making that crossover from predominantly stage into film, and seeing what what that goes on right now. So, as of right now. That's where I'm at. I mean, I was actually supposed to have headshots today, and um, unfortunately, I got. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be like rude or anything, but I. I got my haircut, and I think it's a little shorter than what <laughs> I. Who fucked it up? Yeah. Who fucked and, it up? And, and just no, no. Put it's, blast. it's a great. It's no, a great. It's definitely a great, <laughs> need to. You need to go use code word podcast no. at Bank Salon, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. That's Did you hear the ad, bro? Yes. Fuck. Yeah. That I was actually was gonna say it right yeah, after that. And I kind of forgot, yeah. but um. You know, <laughs> still still learning lessons, still learning lessons right, and right. stuff like that and cool, cool. Uh, and everything. And um, I was going to do that. And thankfully, you know, um, you know, Dustin allowed me to reschedule because I just told him, I was like, hey, man, I like I like it. But I think it's a little too high and tight for what my best look is and what I genuinely look like most of the time. Yes. And um, obviously, if these are going to be used for the next extended period of time. I, I I would like to wait. So, but that was that's the next thing is getting updated professional headshots and going out there. And I actually dude. had, I I enjoy them. No, I mean like yeah, uh, but just that keeping up on them. Yeah. I like to change my. I'm, yeah. I'm constantly growing my hair, yeah. cutting and this and that. And it's you always have to fucking update it. Yeah. Well, you see me from the movie versus now. And plus, I like to grow my beard out in and out. And um, I always so. have a stubble. You. This is probably a very time you will actually yeah. ever see me fully cleanly shaven, because my my skin's sensitive too. So I'm always just a. You know, buzz it down with no yeah. guard and just let the stubble yeah. hang out. But uh, that's the next phase. I actually had my first audition, commercial audition, the other day, and uh, I felt it went really well. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah it, it was an awesome experience, and I met a lot of nice people. And like we were saying, you know, every opportunity has other opportunities within it. And even if I don't get a call back or casted, man, first one in the books. No Done. man, I'm telling you, it's Made not an only that; it's and... a, a numbers game. Like yep. if you just keep doing it, yep. it, eventually you're gonna land on it because you're gonna you already have it, and yeah. then you're eventually you're gonna need a guy. Just it's not that you you, you know you did bad; it's just they yeah. need you just didn't fit and or well, whatever. And, you know, and you also so. know most of it is do you look the part? Exactly. What we're looking oh, for. exactly. And you, you, yeah, you got to be able to take those those yeah. in it and no, not necessarily take it so personally because. You know, you have your vision just like I have my vision and things. And if somebody was to come to me and say, hey, I, pre I have this for that. And it's like, that just doesn't fit with my vision. I'm not necessarily taken away from what you did. It just doesn't necessarily. Yeah, it's not, not what I'm looking for. And just keep going. Yes. You know, but um, besides the dinner theater right now and getting the ball rolling, like I said, going on, um, you know, um, commercial auditions and just getting my my just jumping right into the water and seeing if I can swim with that. Nothing really right now. Um, I did uh, get offered a call back for um, a local a local um, play and I was really, really excited about it. But. I made a tough decision for personal and professional reasons and declined it. Um, and they were very understanding. And I'm, I'm a very open and honest person. I think you guys can tell that. And I just told them where I was at. And um, otherwise, that would have been the next announcement to make. But uh, I saw the cast list, and it's still going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm still going to go see it. So, yeah. yeah you really know, really I'm cool. just trying to work. That and music. That's also the I thing, too. To I'm, I, yeah, yeah. I'm still been working. And that's, that's uh, a, a goal is to have um, – I, you know, I've been sitting on a stack of, like, you know, 45 songs now for a couple of years, or more than a couple of years. Recorded or they need to be recorded? Uh, so I have – I would say about half. I, I would say about 10 are recorded. Um, the rest of them are in a mix between you. Like, I got a beat or I got the words or I got a little bit of both going on and stuff like that. So um, beyond the acting and pursuing that, it's just creative juices are flowing. I'm feeling positive, feeling energy and doing that. And obviously, that's what I'm doing a lot in my downtime. If I'm not researching and, re you know, crafting myself or, you know, cold reads or anything like that or doing research, I'm making music. And, and still an ultimate goal by the end of the year is to get – um, hopefully a whole album out and want to do another um, stage performance because I do miss oh, performing on the stage. I really Is there really any do uh, local music. acts that uh, you, you we should be checking out? I mean, do you uh, follow them? Are it, you admittedly, I'm not since it's been. It, it's no joke. Been you know like seven eight years since i've really really been mm -hmm. involved heavy in the in the music scene so i don't really know what are you exactly. listening to right now normally uh 
I know everybody says it, but I listen to everything and just variety. But right now, normally, I've been listening to a lot of instrumental stuff, you know, obviously for inspiration and that type of stuff. And and I actually, I've been listening to a lot of bluegrass. I, I really do enjoy bluegrass music. Well, he's yeah. a real big hip hop guy. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So um, uh, one person I still got to shout out. I've already shouted him out. Check out Corey Hill. I am Corey Hill at Instagram. Check him out. That's my boy from back in the day who I did music with. He's making moves. He actually um, did um, um, uh, a trip over to Europe recently and everything like that. Check his page and you will find a lot of talented people to check out and everything like that. What's going on? I wish I could say more, but admittedly for a selfish reason, I've been kind of dealing with my own stuff and, yeah, and focusing on that. And, um, you know, that's just kind of, is there I've anything at, that, so. uh, you've been listening to lately that you like any new artists or something, any new artists? Um, admittedly i feel like i'm so out of the loop on a lot of things <laughs> yeah. like i was telling keith that like you're gonna ask me about like a lot of these things like do you know this person do you know that? i'm like i i, I don't know i'm, I'm, I, well, I'm i didn't learning. ask any of that either. no i'm just saying like <laughs> i'm just saying like for anything like that so like new like for for or new just, to me yeah yeah what? um man one of the i'm hey. trying to think like right now what's on like some some new things what are you listening to mcclay like, uh, I'm listening to the new Vince Staples song. Vince Staples put Vince out a Staples new song. Is good. I, I love like Vince it. I think yeah. Vince Staples is the best yeah. best hip hop artist out right now. Nice. I don't think there's anybody better than Vince Staples. I, um, he, he came across my Spotify a couple times, and then he yeah. was also featured on the Spider Verse soundtrack too, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, his beats are so yeah. badass. Yeah, and he does all him and his buddies do all their own beats, and, and I've seen a cool video of that. Yeah, him making a beat. Yeah, that dude. and uh, he's just his flow is amazing. He's got a really good flow. Um, I really think that uh, he's probably the best. He's got that old school there. '90s attitude yes. too, mm -hmm. like his yeah. attitude. Yeah, he's yeah. very cool, dude. Um, I'm also uh, listening. I talked about the new E40. The new E40 was amazing. Uh, uh -huh. The new ASAP Ferg is amazing. Um, Snow Patrol. Yeah, I don't listen to that. Or not Snow Patrol. Um, <laughs> what's that other band you guys listen to? Oh, Sleep Token. Sleep dude. Token. Yeah. Sleep Token, Sleep best band in the in the universe right it. now. I'll have to look oh, it up. Oh man, they're fucking amazing, man. They'll nice. change your world. Nice. So, sleep token. Yeah. Sleep what time token. are we at, Little Mac? We are at one ten. Oh shit. Oh wow. Oh, sweet. It went by quick, man. So fast. Um, yeah, do you, you can promote whatever you want. If you yeah, want to where talk can about people find you? Do you have you? IG uh, or yeah, Facebook? Yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit more into the social medias. Uh, admittedly, I've always had kind of a weird relationship with them. I kind of was on like the bubble generation, I say. You know, I mean, we didn't have like a desktop computer until I was like 14. Well, that's you know, us, I didn't yeah. Have, yeah, you know. So it was kind of a, a different world to all of a sudden be accessible to the world, to have access and also to be accessible I think we're in the perfect the uh, generation because we got to experience both, like yeah. the before and oh, after. Yeah of that because we're the, we're the last generation of that really it's a trip yeah. but uh, uh i have been posting more just on facebook and social media i recently did get an instagram so if you want to check it out it's just my name derek space d space davenport that's right 3d Derek Dwayne Davenport. You can check me up on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. Immediately, you only see a couple posts because I just started it last week. But hey, I, I got more to come, and I'm excited for for things to share yeah, and yeah. what's going on and stuff like that. And I was always check out Paradox uh, Universe, uh, Joseph Mba, everyone that's affiliated with that. Shout outs to everyone over there. Check out Expo. Um, check out Murder and the Meal. Uh, like I said, next weekend I'll be on there, and I do that every now and again. Like when you know I get I get casted and stuff. So if you're interested in come seeing me, uh, you can reach out to me. And, you know personal messages and stuff and i'll let you know the next time i'm hooked up and uh just keep an eye out on my social media and i'll have more information to follow if things either music related or film related or theater related or just life related in yeah. general if you find me interesting and uh oh, you yeah. know want to share your life with mine and vice versa i'd appreciate that do you have uh, to get tickets for the murder in the mill in advance or can you show up or so you can buy them at the door admittedly abt um they sell out pretty quick yeah. just because it's a it's a big venue a very yeah. popular venue and everything like that but uh no you can always get them in advance and I can't remember my promo code off the top of my head. But anyway, we'll we'll get yeah, in contact. We'll yeah, out. come yeah. out and check it out. It'd be a lot of fun and I'll I'll mess with you as a character and everything like that. And it'll be it'll be uh it'll be good. It'll okay, be good. Man. So um anything else? Anything else to promote? Um Really go see the movie. What was the name yeah, of the movie? Go see the movie. Rent the movie. Yeah. No, what's the name of your uh, your 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 music? The Collective, so, you said. So no no no. Um. So the 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 band when I did it, um, with Corey and the band, we were Mike Control, like M I C Control, yeah. and then um, you can actually most of that stuff is, I don't think exists on the internet anymore, oh, okay, unfortunately, okay. to find. But uh, I did do a, a project with uh, Mike Ross shortly afterwards. It's called Paper Money. Um, that stuff's still up there. It's been up there for a while. But if you want to check it out, you still can. You can go to whatispapermoney.bandcamp.com. dot 
And uh, there's just a handful of songs up there and stuff like that. And it was a fun, uh, you know, project that we did and everything like that. But I still really enjoyed the songs. And Hell yeah, um, dude. And yeah, shout outs to Sweet and Low. That's definitely the most popular one that was on there. Okay. Um, I'm going to definitely else? have to check it out with this yeah. smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a whole story behind well, it. Fuck, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one off camera. But yeah. um, other than that, and promote the podcast. If you're watching now, continue to keep watching and make sure to tell your friends and share it because these guys are awesome. This experience is awesome. Oh, thanks, and the man. guests that they have on are awesome. And I'm not just, you're awesome. that's not a biased opinion <laughs> yeah, on that. Thank you. And brother. the whole crew. Yes. Shout out to Chris and Ryan. You can't really see them right now, but they're doing fantastic. Yes, they are. And uh, I really, really appreciate you guys and everything. That's really, thank really you, awesome. brother. Well, yeah. we appreciate you, man. Yeah. Sounds like you're yeah, thanks for freaking the, No, just thank, thank you for taking the time to come on, man. It means a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, it means a lot for us, the invite. Uh, you know, pick your brand, fucking uh, answering all these questions for us and shit. So yeah. it means a lot, man. So I do have one more thing to say. If oh, you yeah, for mind. sure. Dude. I just want to say hi, mom. Hi, dad. Hi, everybody in the family. I love you very much. Thank you for all your continued support. And I'm smiling, and I know you are too. And here's to the future. Let's cool. go get it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Thank you. I'm sorry to your family with my potty mouth. Like, Dude, you're good. <laughs> Chuck, doing hip hop music. So I wrote a song called Sex Sells, okay, which cool. is actually okay, over the Pony okay, Genuine okay. beat. Oh, and yeah. I'm, I'm my, my, my grandma Ma, shout out to my grandma Ma. She used to come out and I used okay. to say it. And, uh, you know, I apologize on stage two for her. So <laughs> you're good. But anyway, Can thank just, you guys. Can you hand me that slate really quick? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a song called uh, Bitches Be Cray Cray Drops 2020. So. <laughs> That's a wrap on the podcast, episode 37. Hey. Awesome show, Thank brother. You. Cool. That was fucking excellent. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Was it? Yeah. yeah I was like, we were talking about some heavy shit. Yeah. Bang.